This is Late Night Help. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. Hi, I'm Mark Allen, and along with the insane Daryl Wayne, one of the nicest men in the entire world, we're going to present health ideas and issues for you and your family to think about, learn about, and maybe even act on. Uh, we're going to be talking about, is organic food really worthwhile? Uh, we're going to be talking about brain health with uh, Dr. Uh, Laura Van Bryce, and we're going to be talking about um, uh, uh, African-American women and some of the health issues facing them as late night health takes to the air. We're going to start uh, with part two of an interview we did a couple of weeks ago uh, regarding joy at the holidays. Uh, our guest is Swami. Uh, also known as the Orange Cowboy, um, and and the Hip Guru. Are we still the Hip Guru as well, Swami? Uh, some people, but uh, Orange Cowboy, OrangeCowboy.com. That's the best way to get to get a hold of you. All right, the OrangeCowboy.com. Uh, and I'm oh, my orange socks were in the uh, <laughs> were in the laundry today, so I'm wearing my lime green bright ones instead. Oh, forget it. We have to reschedule. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the holiday season has begun. And now until January 2nd or so, there are all kinds of holidays. In fact, uh, up until January 11th with, um, uh, in, in some circles, uh, you know, Christmas is celebrated as late as January 11th, I believe. And so the next month or so can be stressful, can be trying for many people. And what we're going to be doing in the next 20 minutes is figure out some ways to work with yourself so that people don't get to you. I'm going to be listening to this interview a lot myself because I tend to let some people get to me, and Swami Swami knows that for a fact. (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, Swami, why do you think we have these interpersonal relationship issues when these are people we're supposed to love this is a this is a great question mark and uh, you know last time we we touched on this with, with our siblings and I think perhaps where you're leading to today is looking within I mean, this is what you said because the first relationship we need to have solid is the one with our own self and as Maybe for some people that may sound silly, but self-worth and self-esteem, there, there's quite a lot of challenges when you read the, the research studies, the psychology papers, the coaching, the number of people that go to co- life coaches these days. Really, there's kind of a, a challenge to love ourselves more, to treat ourselves nicely. So I think probably that's where it all stems from. Well, we all have you know relationships outside of us i mean right. you know you meet you meet somebody and you say gee very nice smile that's going on in your head right sure while you're saying nice to meet you and you're right. shaking their hand uh, if it's somebody you know you go oh my gosh they're giving you that fake giving me that fake smile and oh. you go hi how are you <laughs> right <laughs> That's the challenge that, you know, familiarity breeds contempt is the old expression that right. needs to change. I think we have, you know, it is kind of a, I, I feel, and I try to do this, is to make an extra effort around those closest to me and not get lazy or careless, but to just catch myself, make the effort to see what I like best in that person and always be inspired by it and and just really focus on that because that's how they have a really good relationship appreciating the gifts another person has and and when they start to appreciate the gifts I have it becomes a very pleasant day (laughs) right but at the same time and and maybe you're at a different level but I don't know about that uh, well 
you know, you go to a, a, a family event and you know that Cousin George has always bothered you. And last time we, we spoke about this, you said, you know, kind of think about all the positive things about Cousin George or Uncle right. Ned or whoever it Uncle, might be. It was Uncle Ned at the last Thanksgiving, Cousin well, George for Christmas. Well, he, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't make it. He's still, he's still stuffing himself with turkey. So we're moved oh, okay. on to, to Cousin George. And what's hap- what happens is that, that just thinking about Cousin George or Uncle Ned or Aunt Millie, you know, put your back up. Yeah, uh, and this, this this goes back to how, how do we want to feel at this holiday party? How do we want to feel at this holiday season? Because if we are sick and tired of being sick and tired about being stressed, then we can say, now just hold on a second. I, every time I think about the time cousin dad did this to me, I feel angry. Well, I'm going to stop thinking about that and I'm going to say isn't there a time where Uncle Ned and I cousin Billy and Billy and I actually had a good experience together and I'm going to replace that because it's me it's nothing about them because I want to be happy this holiday season and if I can be happy we, we may actually make a new uh, favorite experience together so let's, but I have to take the, the responsibility right but alright let's take take a look at something and that is you go into a room. You see your cousin, George. Okay, George. All right. And George says, so you're still wearing the orange, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and yep. you go, yes, I am. And you walk away. He comes back. Well, okay. I may I may joke back. I may tease him. I may say something like, oh, you're still wearing your hair that way. You're still wearing your toupee or... You know, you're still making silly jokes. You know, I, I would either try to make light of it. I would do my best, and, I'm, and it's only an attempt at keeping in the frame of mind that I want to be in. I don't want anyone else to dictate how I feel. And but, and you're right. I don't think any of us do. We, and that's going back to what you just said, in right. that. Everything is about it is internal. My relationship, my reaction to Daryl when I saw him smile this morning at a pretty young woman who was in the studio, um, and he smiled at me. I don't know if he was smiling at me or at the. It wasn't the, the same kind of smile. No, it was certainly <laughs> not the same kind of smile. No, but but you know he was not glad to see me. I could tell that. At least I hope I interpreted that correctly. But there are, you know. But you, so you've just done two things. One, you've you've made the absolute certainty out of an out of a, a guess. You don't know unless you've asked him. But you've chosen to go to a very negative. I'm sure he's not happy to see me. Why aren't you sure he's happy to see me? Why don't you just or say I don't care how he's whether or not he's happy to see me, but I'm happy to be here. Ah, and that would be a way of going to that Christmas dinner, the Hanukkah dinner, the New Year's Eve celebration, and all the other little celebrations in between. It's a start. It's a start. I I mean, the best exercise I like to do, the best game I play is I notice how different people, because everybody's different, People have certain ways of speaking or, or standing. People are more confident or less confident. And I have a habit, I think we all have been trained, that certain people, when they do certain things, that look, that's a good thing. And when they act this way, that's not a good thing. And half the people believe one side is true and half believe the other side is true. And so, for example, I'll see somebody who looks very confident and I'll meet them for the first time and say, boy, that was a confident person. Then I'll go to a family dinner, and one of my relatives who's confident is there. I'll go, oh boy, that person seems like they got a big ego. Same, same thing. It's just why do I get triggered that way? Right. You know, it's a, a lot is about perception. Um, and but the 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 thought is that 
we want to not care about what other people think about us. Am I correct? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, obviously, we, we'd like to know that we're making, doing good in the world. It's good to get positive feedback. But if we're, if we're following our hearts and, and doing something we feel passionate about, helping the world in some way, you know, those kinds of things, we don't care if people think we're too big or too short or too thin or too heavy or uh, we dress too much this way or, you know, we do care that we're making a difference in the world. But if we are making a difference in the world and someone says you're wasting your time, you know it's not even true. You see, there's different kinds of things to be concerned about, healthy things and little things. Our guest is Swami, known as the Orange Cowboy, um, and we're going to talk when we come back. He has advanced degrees. He's you could be Doctor Swami, really. I was looking I at that. You are Doctor Swami, <laughs> right? And I'm a Doctor of Science. Doctor of Science? Yes, sir. Wow, I did not know that. I thought it was in theology. See. You learn some new things every time. Uh, Dr. Swami is our guest, uh, theorangecowboy.com, orangecowboy.com, for more information, and, of course, here at latenighthealth.com. Daryl and I return with Swami as Late Night Health continues. Don't go away. Lots more coming up. Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. Welcome to Guide to the Soul. This is Robert Clancy. Grief can be such a burden on your heart. It can be crippling to the point where you can't even seem to function. I've been there and I know that pain. But I also know you're not alone in that sorrow. We're all going through something in this life. Just as the sun has to face dark days, so do we. But the sun also has to shine again. Letting go of grief is not about letting go of your loved one. It's about making room in your heart for the love that you hold for them. If you have great grief, then you must have a very big heart too. It's time to fill your heart with that love and share it with everyone. For more inspiration from Robert Clancy, visit GuideToTheSoul.com or go to the Moments with Robert page on LateNightHealth.com. If you or someone you love suffers from drug addiction, now is the time to utilize your private health insurance PPO plan. If eligible, receive up to $30,000 or more in substance abuse benefits with low or no out-of-pocket cost. We are the National Treatment Network, the premier drug and alcohol treatment referral service operating 24-7. We help connect you with facilities nationwide that accepts PPO private health insurance for substance abuse. If you have PPO substance abuse coverage and you need immediate admittance to a medical detox or residential rehab treatment center, call us now. Call our live referral helpline today. The call is free. This program is not available to Medicare or Medicaid customers. Call 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. That's 800-296-1252.